and Divaldo. Yes. We, we are, are live. We're live. We live and direct. Live. Live and direct. Not indirect, but direct. Exactly. We're beaming this across <laughs> the whole universe. Um, mm, multiverse. The, the, mate, the multiverse. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the... Um, the whole kind of flash thing, you know, we've, we've mentioned this before. I just can't believe Deval. Yeah. It's a massive, massive flop. Mm, it's a yeah. massive flop. Big flop. Belly flop. And the thing is, I don't know why I keep wearing this, but <laughs> it reminds me that I love the character, but I just think, yeah. man, give us a decent flash. No, I was just having a conversation with the missus just uh, earlier on. And I was just like saying, uh, uh, we started speaking about the flash and i was just like look this is the lowdown with the flash it costs say 300 million to make it's only mm. made uh some it hasn't made all of that back and um they got rid of henry cavill there's a new superman there's this going on and there's new casting rumors for the new superman which we're going to speak about in a bit but uh i don't know man dc films for me i just no expectation anymore deval for me that is yep. it L low or no for me the same as well i'm just i go in there and expect not much i expect nothing and that's why i think i kind of enjoyed the flash in a way because i just had such low expectations but yeah you're yeah. right going forward i'll just have the same and see what happens yeah but you know what people should have high expectations of the flicksters because mm. we are bringing you episode uh 247 on the way to heaven there you go on the way to heaven <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thanks for downloading another episode of the show. Deval and I are going to be bringing you a uh, a review later on in the show. Yeah. A big, 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 big summer blockbuster movie. Mm. Mission Impossible number seven. I kept thinking it was Mission Impossible number eight. No, it's number seven. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, so we're going to be stick around for that. We're going to be speaking about that. And we'll tell you if it's good or not. And um, what else? We've got obviously movie news. We've got streaming trailers, a couple of really great trailers that we've got to speak about. But before mm. all of that stuff, Deval's going to do shout outs for us. Yes, we've got quite a few shout outs uh, mm. today. And again, shout us out Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We've got threads now. TikTok is going to come out as well. Right. Give us a shout out and we will show you as much love as you show us as well, which I'm going to talk about the people that have given us a shout out this week. First one goes out to Kate. Kate is on uh, Facebook and she gave us a shout out there. So we're giving you a shout out back. Loves their movies. I'm not sure. Have you seen uh, Mission Impossible, Kate? Oh, are you going to watch it? Yeah. Do you like a Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise the... running. Mm-hmm. You know that one he's got? <laughs> no one runs like Tom Cruise in there. Every <laughs> single movie. You. Yeah, you told me. It's every, every single, single movie. movie. He's got to have him running shot. Me, it's in the contract. It's in the contract. Uh, next shout out goes to Ciel Noir 3, our very own our very Ciel own. Noir 3. Go check out her page on Instagram full of inspiration, uh, wellness and happiness and music and vibes. Uh, she also gave us a shout out about the sheer butter that we gave her mm. from Jim Fua Glow, Jim Fua London. Uh, she gave them a shout out too. Go check out them on Instagram. I'll, I'll tag it on, uh, on Instagram later on, but go Wicked. check them out. If you want soft skin, you know like us and like Ciel Noir, go get that Jim Fua Glow. <laughs> <laughs> right, next shout out goes to cloud watcher uno uh he's a music man yeah. he's got a great music community go check him out on instagram facebook really great uh, pictures also, he's a great photographer he uses his yeah. phone most of the times you know that yeah he is next level but go check him out he also uh, does uh, live shows a couple of times a year mm -hmm. in london but go check him out show him some love he's got a podcast as well cloud Which watches is. you know next one goes out to zakroff our very own zakroff who we're going to get on a show real soon zach you got to be here mate got to i'm thinking i'm going to reach out to him and ask him if he can join us for talk to me which is a <sighs> a24 horror film i know he likes you know, independent films and stuff like yep. that. So let's see if you can join us for that one. Thank you for the stories, Zakrov. AL Media, they gave us a shout mm. on Instagram and they were talking about Wolverine. So we posted a, uh, a post about Wolverine, Deadpool, yep. some onset pics, which we'll talk about. And, you know, AL Media is very, very much looking forward to seeing them 23 years in the making. Oh, since man. we have seen this yellow, you know, yellow jumpsuit, jumpsuit for Wolverine. Yeah. So yeah, AL Media, 24-7, go check out them. 
uh vegas cheers natasha come on the show <laughs> come on, on just come show, natasha she was giving us a shout out on instagram talking about the the strikes which we'll talk about a bit later yeah you know, the SAG strikes. So she's saying she hopes they get a great resolution, and so do we. Uh, so big up to you, Vegas Chiz. And last shout out goes to Shifa. Shifa gave us a shout out on uh, on YouTube. On YouTube, uh, yeah. yeah. On her big telly on YouTube that when she watches it and she's in the zone, gave us a shout out about The Covenant, saying that she saw it and it's a great film. Yeah. So there you go. And Shifa, let us know what films that we should watch. You give us a recommendation. And we'll talk about it on the show. If you want exactly. to come on the show as well, Jiffa, let us know. You know, I know you're a busy person, but make time for the flicksters. Come on, yeah, come on. Those are this week's shout outs. So let's get on with the show. <laughs> Brilliant. Let's do it. Uh, that's great shout outs, by the way. Uh, all right, let's do our movie news now. Listen, let's speak about this, Deval. So you've already kind of mentioned about Wolverine, and we know that Deadpool three was being made because it's not anymore. And we'll kind of speak about that in a moment. But there's more Deadpool three onset pictures, right? What t- yeah. tell us about this? Yeah, as I was just saying, so Wolverine from the nineties cartoon mm-hmm. is the first time that we saw Wolverine on screen with the, you know, the yellow uh, sort of costume, you know, and obviously that's come straight from the comics. We saw the movies in 2000 and going onwards with Wolverine and all the X-Men. We're in a bit more, you know, realistic costumes, but this Deadpool three, we're going to have the original Wolverine. We see Wolverine and Deadpool in the same scene in some sort of outside wilderness, looks a bit snowy. I'm yeah. thinking it could be Canada because Wolverine as a character is Canadian. Oh, Ryan Canadian Reynolds he is. as a human being, it's Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're going to play on that. So this, this, maybe they're in Canada. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the show, it shows them fighting. And it just shows Wolverine in the Wolverine that we recognize from the comics mm. and from the 90s. Uh, really successful cartoon. So, you know, yeah. It's just, and you know what, uh, Devout, it, that You know, doing it like that way... The way they probably pitched it to Hugh Jackman is this. They probably said to like Hugh, look, you've played Wolverine, but you haven't played this version of Wolverine. That's how, that's the in. That is how you do it. And he's probably thinking, actually, yeah, I've always been, you know, a certain type of Wolverine and blah, blah, blah. But let me go comic book style and mm. we're going to cease. Oh, man, it's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, uh, actually, no, no, no. I'm going to temper my enthusiasm, Deval. <laughs> like, you know, because you don't know, man. I'm, I'm going to say, look, I'm excited to a certain point. You just don't know what's going on. But that is really interesting. Now, listen, I want to add to that piece of news, Deval, because apparently some big news over here as well. They're saying Carmen... No, I was going to say... No, Carmen sorry. San Diego. <laughs> no, I was going to say... so silly of me. I was going to say Carmen Electra. <laughs> <laughs> Just Electra from the comic books apparently is going to be showing up in Deadpool oh 3. But here's the, here's the thing. They're saying Jennifer Garner is going to reprise her role as Electra. So now... This makes kind of sense a little bit, but I don't know, maybe. We've already heard rumors that Ben Affleck might appear as Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And now they're saying that there might be a little kind of cameo for Jennifer Garner. I mean, what do you reckon in this whole kind of multiversal, could he dip in and out of that? And, you know, we see a little cameo of, you know, would we want to? Should we? That would be very interesting. Mm. And you know what? I could see it happening because it's kind of, they're all doing it, aren't they? With Doctor Strange, <laughs> Multiverse of Madness, they're brought in some it, other yeah. people as we start Spider-Man, done it successfully, very successfully. Uh, we've seen The Flash do it in a weird way. Mm. And they might just, yeah, do you know what? If anyone's going to do it, Deadpool can do it. And Deadpool can make it fun. So, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah up for exactly. That. And it's been 20 years. It's been 20 years since she's, she's played oh, wow. uh, Electra. So, um, oh, wow. yeah, so this was 2003. And mm. that movie, so Daredevil, uh, obviously featured Ben Affleck. So remember, they were obviously a married couple for a really long mm. time. Mm. I, I I think the split was amicable. So maybe, who knows, maybe they could, they could be like a pairing up. Who knows uh, where they kind of, they're in the movie together and everything. That would be quite interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're hearing a lot about all kind of, you know, all this sort of stuff, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens with that one. Moving on, Deval, um, what we've got next on movie news? 
Sound of Music. So mm. I don't know if you've heard of this film. Mm, this film, I, I actually saw the trailer. So Sound of Music. <laughs> Because Sound of Music is the, the old game. Six... Oh, right, no. okay. Because the Sound of Music, I was like, shit, they're doing a remake. <laughs> so, sound of... I don't know. so I don't know. I think I was writing Sound of of uh, of Freedom, and somehow and then, it, 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 it because the Sound it. of Music is so famous. Exactly. Movie. Oh my yeah. gosh. So Sound of Freedom stars Jim Caviezel mm. as a he's uh, basically a, a an agent who goes around looking for uh, basically kids that have been uh, sort of kidnapped and, you know, people are trying to sell them off in uh, sex trafficking, you know? Oh. Yeah, it's deep stuff, man. But this movie, yeah. I, saw, I actually saw the trailer uh, about a month ago. And yeah. I'll be honest, the, the quality of the film didn't look too great. And I thought <laughs> this might be all right, but I didn't mention it. And I, I, I should have mentioned it. I'm sorry, it's my lack of judgment. Yeah, you know, but yeah, this this film looks like a gangster film. Is it? He plays Tim Ballard, who's a real life person who, like I mentioned, is like a, an agent, who a federal agent who mm. uh, tracks down missing children that you know have been caught up in, have been not caught up. Sorry, that's just that sounds just lame. Who have been targeted and have been kidnapped for sex trafficking rings. Right. And uh, yeah, he does. He goes around trying to find them basically, and. Yeah, this film is ma- basically the box office doesn't lie. It's it's doing the it's doing the best right now. Apart from Mission Impossible, yeah. it's doing better than Indiana Jones, man. People are <laughs> watching this film. Yeah. People are liking this film. The worst, the harshest critics mm. are giving this film a big thumbs up. Eight point wow. three on IMDb, man. Eight point three on IMDb. But is it coming out? I need to know. I need to watch it in America. It came out on the fourth of July, man. Okay, so, and what a day to pick. Like, yeah. yeah, Freedom Day, exactly. So somehow mm. we need to get this and talk about this film. Mate, yeah. Jim Caviezel, we haven't... Like, where's he been after yeah. um, he Passion is... of the Christ? And, you know, what? I, I don't know where he went after that. Like... I can tell you kind of where he went. He <laughs> is a man of substance. He's a man of... of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say words like integrity. And he's got like... Mm. He's got what he feels is right. He's, right. a, he's a Christian as well. He's okay. very, he's faith, you know, he's faith driven. So he only, he'll only do films. Where the, he, there's substance, like you said. Exactly. Films that are not going to just go down the Hollywood stereotype anymore. Mm-hmm. He stopped mm-hmm. all that. So he, he, he's done, he's done about a few faith based films and stuff right, like that. Right, right, films right. Of different types of, you know, uh, stories. And this one, I think he, he felt was a, because it obviously no, no person, yet alone a Christian, yeah. wants anyone to be caught up in sex trafficking so because of the true story and you can go on youtube and you can see yeah. that will tim ballard talking about this is it do you know what do it it's worth yeah. it yeah you know, i wonder if he would come back for resurrection the i think apparently mel gibson is i think we've already spoken about yeah, this it's happening i think yeah. it's happening you know because oh. i mean who else would you, obviously like you know there, there might be some shots of him and like you know there's, mm. there's got to be like flash maybe flashback scene or something i don't know mm. they, they've got to bring him back or something but yeah i'll look into this one that sounds really interesting mm. uh go check that one out folks and if you do see it let us know remember message us uh and tell us what you think now let's speak about this because this is hitting up the news everywhere this is the sag after strike that's hit apparently it happened on thursday midnight local time in los angeles or whatever it was and so that is the union so members there's about 160,000 people who make up the union yeah. screen actors guild uh sag aftra that's the full kind of name and they decided that if they don't get uh kind of certain rights etched into contracts and you know uh, written down basically then they're going to go on strike so they decided to strike that means deval this is mad they so no filming no, mm. like obviously no acting, no singing, no dancing, no performing, no giving interviews, no uh, giving auditions. There's no uh, attending Comic-Con, which was going to be happening. There's mm. no attending film festivals. So uh, I think the Toronto International Film Festival, maybe I'm getting that wrong, but maybe there was going to be like one big film festival that was going to be happening. No, that's not going to happen. Um, man, it just basically lockdown in Hollywood basically yeah even uh recently there was a the premiere of oppenheimer which we're going to mm. see next week 
back uh, home. Leicester Square, London. Yeah, that happened a few days ago, a few days ago, a couple of days ago, and uh, literally the strike was announced. I think during the premiere. And Shit. the actors then left and didn't do any interviews after that. Really? They, they, yeah, they, in, in solidarity, <clears throat> I've heard uh, Sean Gunn, James's gun, uh, his brother was talking about some of the reasons why this is important. Yeah. Gave an example of saying that, like many years ago, uh, like uh, an executive, a producer, or top producer or something, like the, the disparity, the gap was like, they could be earning like 30, 40 times I think he said, to be precise, 39 mm. times more than the lowest paid person. Really? He said, now that's about 400 times. Mm. So that's a 400x. 400x on someone else's, you know. So obviously, we all understand people are paid their worth or paid what they contribute. And whether you think it's equal or not, yeah, actors get paid more than the sound assistant, for example, it is what it is. But yeah. I'm saying it's not just about the hard facts of the pay but people's like residual incomes and stuff like yeah. that what you get paid after the fact people's likeness there's there's talk there's the studio ai yeah the studios wanted to be able to do this yeah where if they have extras and people like you know in the crowd and stuff like that they can use them once mm. And they can copy and paste their image onto their database and keep using their using likeness that person forever Forever and have have rights to their likeness forever. That's mad. That's that's, that's mirror, mad. man. That's that the is mirror. The episode. The episode. <laughs> it's mad. It's crazy. So what they're saying is now then, if they um, look because because Matt Damon was in London, like you just mentioned, he was on the Oppenheimer mm. thing, and he said, look, you know, we got to support. And then I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it's it's you know, it's really nice that these guys are doing it. They don't have to worry about this sort of stuff because I mean, they're like. They're yeah. the biggest stars in Hollywood. So this yeah. really is for the the other 100,000 like, yeah. or 150,000 people, whatever, who aren't kind of doing that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So what does this mean for things like Deadpool 3? What does this mean Blade. for Game of Thrones? Uh, sorry, the, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones the new Game of Thrones. The new Game of Thrones won't be delayed. Uh, House of the Dragon won't be delayed. Anything that's filmed within the UK is separate because it's under the uh, equity uh, sort of association and yeah. has different regulations. So anything in the UK that's filmed there won't be affected. It's only <clears throat> people that it's all are US the, stuff. It's only the SAG association. Yeah. So yeah. So a lot of stuff. Everything. Deadpool three. Mate, delayed, every, every, Kong, everything's so everything's same. yeah. All the Marvel yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's all delayed. Yeah. It, it, so so they can't. So say for example, now what big movie are we going to be speaking about soon? Uh, well, we'll be speaking about Oppenheimer. So Oppenheimer. we won't. They won't well, be. The star, uh, the actors won't be able to do anything on that now. The, the, you mean like the the press, press, the press stuff? Yeah, yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Which they probably will like <laughs> because many of them, many of them they hate like it. doing it anyway. Exactly. So yeah, so Comic Con <laughs> that might not happen. There's just the comics. Emmys. Just, just the comic. <laughs> as it says in the title. <laughs> just comic. <laughs> exactly. And then you know we've got the Emmy nominations that came out just recently. Was it Emmys or Grammys? I can't even remember. Emmys, I think it was. So that they're saying that that might be kind of like low-key that might be a low-key mm. thing okay okay so we'll yeah. see what happens mm. it's big it's big stuff man yeah um all right well listen look that's your movie news for this week keep it locked with the flicks we'll bring you more uh movie news uh on next week's show uh but for now let's do new on streaming and let's speak about this so we haven't really have we spoken much about amazon devel i'm just trying to think we it's been apple a lot obviously netflix yeah uh, I watched what did I watch on Amazon, which was um, Citadel. Was it? I think it was called, yeah, Citadel, which was the um, mm. John, uh, which was the not Jon Snow, um, oh, uh, Matthew Rob Stark, Marsden. yeah, something Marsden, so, uh, yeah, so Rob Stark Marsden. and uh, Priyanka Chopra, yeah, uh, that thing. <laughs> I, I managed to watch that, and that was just by the by, like, you know, nothing's nothing to write home about, so that was that. Uh, but tell us about this. This is called Bones and All, and this is on Amazon. Uh, yeah, tell us about this one. Yeah, Bones and All is uh, is basically it stars Timothy Cham Timothy Chamele, mm. who uh, we, we're going to see in Doom, Doom, Dune, yeah, Dune, Dune, Dune Part Two, part one, yeah. Dune Part Two. Uh, he's one of the guys a lot of ladies love. You know, I it's, know. Like, yeah, a lot of ladies like this guy. Uh, and Taylor Russell, uh, who we saw in Escape Room. And Escape Room 2, uh, mm. tournament, 
tournament of champions. She yeah. was in Lost in Space, Lost in Space. She was right. the uh, one of the daughters in Lost in Space. Uh, good actress. Uh, so it stars them too. Uh, and this is a bit of a weird one, man. Yeah, I've seen the trailer it's, for it. That, yeah. It's one of them a vampire or something. Yes, it's vampiric. Oh. So it's a two-hour film. It's 18, so it's rated R, R, R. Mm. And uh, but it's about a young woman who embarks on a 1,000-mile odyssey through America where she meets a disenfranchised drifter, Timothy mm-hmm. Chamele. Uh, but when, you know, when they try to obviously, you know, they're trying to find their freedom and, you know, be young and all that kind of stuff. But uh, when they meet, they uncover some dark truths and dark pasts mm-hmm. about themselves that we as an audience find out how dark they can be and how dark they're willing to go. And uh, just, yeah, it's a bit of a wow. weird, it's like, a bit like a hopeless sort of coming of age, romantic and horror. It's all of that mixed into one. It's a wow. bit mad. But uh, bones and all makes you think, hmm, so they're going to eat someone, bones and all. And, and all, eat, eat everything. Mm, oh, God. Exactly. Do you remember this film? I'm um, like that, actually, you know, yeah. saying that. My mum's <laughs> like that. No, no joke. She's one of them, like, yeah. Ghana mums. Like, you know, when they, when they, when they eat the, the chicken. They just all, eat every, all, yeah. All chicken and you need the bones on the table they're like oh like you're not gonna eat the the, the bones i'm like no give me the bones <laughs> she's like <laughs> i sometimes yeah. do that like, you know something like you know if i ever see like a bit of meat still left on it i'm like yeah. no you're not gonna throw that way i'll finish the yeah. because it's still yeah, but, of meat left yeah, on the it thing is, she'll come after your bit so then <laughs> when your kid's looking at you thinking oh daddy that's, that's finished and my mom will come after you <laughs> <laughs> and eat your bones oh, and leave a pile God. of bones like a, like a that is spirit pyramid. Bones oh and all. Oh my gosh, man. But, uh, Auntie's yeah. going for it. <laughs> um, <Trust me. laughs> but you know, do you remember this movie from the 80s? I want to say it's called, it's, it's directed by Catherine Bigelow. And it's, I, I think mm. Catherine Bigelow, uh, and it's called Near Dark. It's kind of like a really gothic vampire no. movie. It kind of does, it sounds kind of sim- something similar to that. Um, but yeah, interesting. Okay, so that's out on Amazon. Um, so go check that one out. Um, we haven't put this on the list, but we, Deval and I, we've been watching, obviously, Hijack. We've been watching mm. Marvel, Secret Invasion. We saw kind of like, you know, all that sort of stuff. We'll kind of speak about those because we're nearing the end mm. Uh, Hijack definitely you should be watching because it's gripping stuff really really very, good very good um, and Deval Secret Invasion let's leave until like you know mm, have you yeah I mean you for me the best things have been Rhodey and uh, yeah. Fury that's it I, I don't know man I'm I'm a bit mm, about it mm. I, I was uh, going to talk about it because it's just it's not really doing it for me that, that, anymore it's a bit light it is, it is. But what uh, are you making? So we, how many episodes of Hijack have we got left? Uh, I don't know. I, don't, you know what, I think there's seven episodes altogether. So we've got three left, I think. Three yeah. left. Three left, yeah. All I, when when this last episode finished, I was like, oh, God, I can't wait. I want to watch another flipping episode. So I was just <laughs> like, oh, man. But yeah, it's one of those things where it keeps you on the, literally on the edge yeah. of your seat. They're on the edge of their seats. Yeah. Um, there's like there's a conspiracy it's going higher up now isn't it deval like yeah, politicians may be involved and, somewhere yeah exactly they, it, someone it, else it, is pulling multi, the strings multi-leveled show it's not just about the hijackers and the people on the plane there's people mm. in, the, in the office in the government police relationships families it's, yeah. a, it's a good show it's a good show yeah it is I, it's pretty decent they're, they're onto a bit of a winner there and idris mm. elba he's always always watchable so if mm. you aren't watching it go check it out it's really good uh and let us know what you think now let's do uh trailers so we've got a really really good a really good selection of trailers over here which we think that you'll enjoy so we've got a historical piece now with this one, Duval, I want to get your mm. take on this. So this is directed by Ridley Scott, starring Joaquin Phoenix, who plays Napoleon, mm-hmm. historical figure, French revolutionary, you know, uh, you know, obviously calling him legendary, calling him a tyrant. How he's remembered in history today mm. is is kind of, you know, really kind of controversial because some people are saying, oh, you know, he's this way, he's that way. This movie is going to basically present to us a version of him. But here's the thing, Duval. Joaquin Phoenix, maybe I don't know my ears. Maybe my ears need to be checked. But was he doing an American accent? You know, I couldn't tell. 
I, I couldn't, couldn't tell, tell what kind of accent it was because it can't be, a, it shouldn't be American. If anything, it should be no. like English because it's like historical. And usually they've yeah. got an English accent for that kind of thing. Exactly. But I couldn't but tell. But it, it, it wasn't, a, it, it's not a thick French accent either. No. So I'm like, where like, where are they going with this? I, I don't no. know. So that was one thing. And then, um, but it's got, what's her name? Is it Vanessa Kirby? Is she- Vanessa Kirby, Jodie Comer's in it, who she's, gang- she's gangster. Any accent she can do. She can so, do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, this is obviously epic, isn't it? It's like there's yeah. a lot of scale battles, yeah. you know, uh, get going behind the man, the myth and like, you know, whoever he is and everything. So, yeah, this is this looks interesting. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, he's obviously a weighty actor. He's mm. obviously got some heft. Would you reckon is this a shout out for Oscar, Oscar. contender? It all depends on how the accent comes across. If it comes across a bit funny, I don't think so. This is going to be cinema and also I think Apple TV. I think. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. So, so, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I don't know. I'm interested to see how it is, but for, for, for some reason, I'm not really that pulled towards it. I don't it know. was something I don't know about mm. it, which I was just like, I don't know. It didn't pull suck me in mm. as as kind of like you know initially. And the thing is, right, interesting thing when people go out and watch this trailer, and please do watch the trailer. It's like the director of Aliens, Blade mm. Runner, The Martian, like you know, Gladiator. So you know, with Ridley Scott, you're going to get an epic movie, epic. but. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we'll just have to wait and see whether or not it's going to be any good. Um, I never saw this trailer, but I have seen the previous trailer for this one, Deval. But what did you make of Blue Beetle? Yeah, this trailer looked a bit more full, gave us a bit more of a sort of meat and bones to it. Uh, I'm still going to watch it, but expectations are still low because it's DC. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah, I think it, it, this one. This one could be more comedic and more sort of family and it seems like they they know who he is from an early stage so the family are also involved in blue beetles yeah. adventures so that could give it a different spin on things rather than him always keeping a secret away from everyone yeah but uh but yeah i mean i'm gonna watch it but i've got massive expectations but yeah, yeah. They, it's, it's interesting friday it's night fun and we'll just yeah, see what exactly. happens with that one yeah, we'll give yeah, this one yeah. now listen i saw this next trailer that we're going to be speaking about and deval you know what, man? Seriously, over the last, I, I want to say over the last 10 or 15 years, there's been a there's been a seismic shift in production values when it comes yeah. to Bollywood movies. I'm not even yeah. joking. If you compare the movies that were coming out 10 years ago to what they are now, Just even five years, ago, years yeah? ago, maybe oh. even like even, I'm telling you, man, this trailer is called Joan and mm. <laughs> mate, it is got flipping everything. I didn't know whether I was watching The Mummy, Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> like, you know, Lex Luthor, like, you know, <laughs> and that's what you get with a Bollywood movie. You've got yeah. everything, action, dance, drama, like comedy, you name it. I don't know if he's the villain or if he's the hero. Like, what is he, man? Who is this guy? But the trailer, the production value, the fighting the the music everything oh man well, this, we've got this is going to be another rrr type of a thing isn't it and it's got the gangster of bollywood movies it's got s r k shah rukh khan he that, is gangster his body he's yeah, i'll speak to my friend he's like the <laughs> the indian tom cruise and it's he kind of fitting because his haircut his dedication to the role he this guy's body uh, it better be AI or CG because this, uh, this guy's body is it's a madness. I, I know. And he's Mad. about Tom Cruise's age. He's, he's exactly. in his 50s. Not, this he's guy's in his 50s, chicken, man. If not more. This guy is, <laughs> he defies logic. But yeah, this, this movie looks like it's going to be mad fun. I'm, I'm ready for mad. it. I'm ready for this one. December, so go watch the trailer, Jawan. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be on. To, we're going to be on this, so uh, we'll check that one out. Um, all right, and this one again. This one for me as well. I saw this. This looks mad as well. And the reason why it looks mad is because it's from the makers of Deadpool and Zombieland. And if you know mm. that combination, you know there's going to be gunfights. There's going to be like yep. comedy. There's going to be like it, it kind of had this zombie zombie ish kind of vibe to it. But they're not really zombies, though, are they? They're kind of like. It's, it's like something's happened and we're in kind of like a post-apocalyptic yeah. world. There's new cities all about. And Anthony Mackie, oh man, he's, he looks great in this. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like the way, the, way, the way some shows and films are going now is always this post, post-apocalyptic situation. And, you know, it's a bit scary, you know, because we might not be far off from that. AI, 
some sort of virus or something, something. or whether it's war, something mm. may turn us all to so the metal land. It's mad, but hope it doesn't happen. But yeah, this film looks fun. It's another one from a, ge- a game. It's a TV it's show. Is there a show? Oh, I thought it was a film. So I thought it was a film. Uh, a TV show. Uh, it's from a game as well. Uh, yeah, PlayStation. from PlayStation. So, yeah, so again, PlayStation, you've got Gran Turismo. We've seen uh, The Last of Us. I'm telling you, games, the gaming mm. industry, we said it before, the gaming industry this is, is it. worth more than the movie and the music industry combined. But then when the gaming industry now makes movies, they're just <laughs> shitting on everyone else. It's just mad. It's, it's, hmm. I'm telling you, 20, I think we're at, we've reached this kind of point now. 2023 is the year because we've had The Last of Us. And I think a lot yeah. of people have kind of seen, right? oh, shit, those guys can actually take a game yeah. and yeah. turn it into something good. Now let's see what else we can do with this sort of stuff. Yeah. And Twisted Metal is that. It's mad. It is twisted. Exactly. There's kind of gunfights. There's comedy. There's like um, car chases. There's this mm. great central character. Character, Anthony Mackie, he's wise ass, he's cracking jokes, and he, you know, and it's got zombie land vibe to it where there's kind of yeah. like a bit of a road trip to it as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, man. Defo, let it come out. We'll see it. We'll see it. And uh, finally, I never saw the trailer for this one, Deval. So, you spill the beans on this. Uh, expectation high or low on this? So funny you said that because yesterday I actually had baked beans for the first time <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> I had beans. I'm going to spill them right now. Ashoka. <laughs> Ashoka. Oh, she's probably my favorite Star Wars character, you know. She's gangster. And that, that, that comes from the Star Wars animation. And yeah. the Star Wars, the, uh, what's it called? The Clone Wars the animated Wars. series. That mm. for me is one of the best Star Wars things Hmm. But Ashoka is, when you see her story, where she came from to where she is now, yeah. she's come from animation to live action. I know. This trailer, I don't want to say too much, only because I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to hype your expectations and make, yeah. you know, and, and sort of taint something for you. Yeah. yeah. But this show no, does. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, you know what I mean? See, the thing is, the Star Wars universe, right? Look, mm. Mandalorian seasons one and two, great. And or great. The other stuff kind of taken like, you know, a step back a little bit for me. But yeah. this one I think has got the qualities the to kind of like, you know, push it forward. Here's the thing that I'm hearing, Devaldo. You know, you just mentioned Clone Wars. What they're yeah. saying is this is that extension of the Clone Wars type of a story and show. Mm, okay, so they okay. are pulling in elements that people love about the Clone Wars, love about kind of the animation stuff, and then mm. making this going to be a story like that, which I think is really good. Do you remember very recently they released kind of mini stories about the oh, Jedi's Jedi, yeah, it's Tales of the Jedi or something. Tales like that. Of, and there's yeah. a backstory of how oh, of Ahsoka, yes, of Ahsoka, like yes, appearance yes, yes, and everything yes, like yes. that, and everything. Yeah, yes, so it's yes. really good. So maybe if people are thinking, oh, who the hell is Ahsoka and blah blah blah, if you can hunt that episode, oh. it's only like about twenty minutes long, I think. Even it kind of tells that, think, even yes. less than that, maybe. It kind of tells you like who she is, where she comes from, who her parents yeah. were, and how she's kind of got these powers. She's powerful. Oh. But if you think about this show, yeah, and I'm not going to go on about it too long, but I mean, mm. it's out on the 23rd of August. Go watch this trailer, so... about two minutes and two and a half minutes. The thing about this show is not just about Ahsoka, it's about Star Wars. It's, it's showing you the Clone Wars, it's showing you Rebels, which is another really popular uh, animated show. There's mm. The characters in this show, okay, you've got Rosario Dawson, Ahsoka, mm. Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Hera, here was a mm. gangster pilot. She's like gangster, she's from Rebels. You've got uh, Natasha Lou uh, Bordizo. She plays Sabine Wren. Do you know how? Do you know Sabine Wren? She's hmm. gangster. Sabine Wren, and you've got Ezra Bridger, who was also like the another Jedi from Rebels. Shit. He's in it too, and this person looks like Ezra Bridger. You've and the guy, you know the bad, you know the bad batch. Yeah. Oh, bet the bad batch. Yeah. Who you know those the, one of those? Because remember, in the Clone Wars, th- there's one Rex. So Rex, Rex. is yeah. so who plays Rex again? I don't know who's playing Rex in this. Now let me check. So you, is you it, got, oh yeah, got Ray it's, Stevenson. It's not Tamura Morrison. Bad. No, it can't be Tamura Morrison. Nah, the big bad in this. That might be you know actually because he's one of the clones, isn't it? it might be yeah. Him. But uh, yeah, the, the big bad in this is Lars Mikkelsen. So Mads Mikkelsen's brother, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Oh hmm. my god, and we've already Boom. seen him, haven't we? We saw him. No, we haven't seen him in the flesh yet, only in the car. No, 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 no
All I'm going to say is watch this show. That's it. Oh, man. We're show. on it. We are on it. And we've already seen a bit of a show because she's been in Mandalorian, I think. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. season two. Yeah. She kind of appeared in that one. So, yeah, go back and check those out. So, listen, we'll be on to this and we will let you know uh, exactly how this fares in a galaxy far, mm. far away. Okay, now let's do Anniversary Corner. Let's get into this. So, this is 15 years ago, 2008. And I remember this clearly when this movie came out. I was like, hang on a second. This is crazy. Mm. It's got Ben Stiller. It's got Tom Cruise. It's got Robert Downey Jr. It's got like mm. a whole host of funny actors and the premise of it is crazy. Uh, they're going to, um, this is kind of like the make, yeah, it's the making of a movie. Mm. It's a typical look at the making of a movie that's filmed uh, in the jungle somewhere. Mm. But we've got, this is the thing that people were kind of like, you know, crazy about and how this came out. This is Robert Downey Jr. is doing blackface and because he's playing a black character. Mm. I mean, this is in 2008. Now, Deval, this wouldn't happen today. Yeah, that couldn't work, that couldn't work now. But it's, it just goes to show how just 15 years ago, which is not a long time. <gasps> this is 15 years ago, yeah? And not a long time ago, things were different. Is this before then, Iron Man? This is, is this before Iron no, Man? No, same year. Iron Man came out 2008 as well. Same year. Jeez. So then social media wasn't what it is today. We, we had no. Facebook then. I don't think Instagram, Twitter, Facebook all those was 2007, around. I think. Yeah, exactly. That was quite fresh. But yeah, this came out then and, you know, this wouldn't this wouldn't happen now. But it was a funny no. film. It's a good film. A bit of a mad film. They tried something different. Uh, at the time, it done quite well. Box office budget was 92 million. It wow. made 195 million altogether. So it just over doubled its money. Uh, directed by Ben Stiller. Yep. Uh, and yeah, IMDb 7.5. But yeah, mm. I think there was some talk about this recently. And Robert Downey Jr. was saying, yeah, you know, this could never happen these days, but no. very different times. But just goes to show, you know, sometimes just the timing alone can dictate whether you are cancelled or whether you're celebrated. Oh, exactly. Now, I wonder if you watch this. All right. We've said like 15 years, but if you say you go back, uh, say like in the future, say 20 mm. years from now, or whatever, mm. people go back. I wonder kind of what reception, because remember yep. you get those movies, Deval, where they're made like 20 years ago mm -hmm. and some people say they're classics now, but yeah. when they came out, they were shit or vice versa and whatever. Mm -hmm. I wonder in 10 years time, like or 20 years time, what kind of reception the movie will get? Will people be like slating him? I and, would like, not you know? be surprised. And again, mark my words. I haven't, mm -hmm. I ain't fiddled with the time stone, but I guarantee <laughs> you at some stage, you will hear Robert Downey Jr. coming out, apologizing for what he did then. What he's done. Some yeah, yeah. In the future, somebody will bring it up social media will gather enough speed and they will cancel him otherwise if he doesn't yeah. apologize so yeah mark my words there, there, there'll be something and yeah. interestingly so this is the connection to our main film so i mentioned tom cruise and mm. it's not until you realize that who mm. the hell tom cruise is in this he mm. i mean he's he's in makeup the, the way the movie ends is just so kind of weird and everything where Tom Cruise is doing like a little, little dance and whatnot. But it was the first time that I had seen Tom Cruise do anything like this. Yeah. Because normally he does the kind of serious Mission Impossible movies and, you know, he doesn't do comedy that much. Mm. And I wonder what they said to him to be able to say, Tom, we want you to do this role. You're going to be put in on a fat suit and you, you know, you're going to be playing like a producer, blah, blah, blah. It was interesting. Oh, was that was that the sort of time when he was jumping on sofas and Oprah as well? Maybe he was a very, yes. very jolly guy then. And that's what he was. Because he also showed up in, 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 in uh, uh, what's that one with Beyonce and uh, Austin Powers? One oh, of them. He was like, he was like, wasn't he, a, wasn't oh. he in that as well? Didn't he show up in something like, a, like some sort of big man as well in that? Or am I getting it wrong? I can't even remember that wrong. one. Austin, yeah, but I remember Austin Powers in the Beyonce one. That was the third one. Yeah, maybe I'm getting it wrong. Okay. Um, yeah. You don't see much comedy coming from Tom Cruise. Mm. And listen, that's important because, listen, the big movie that we're going to be speaking about, this leads us nicely into our main film review. This is Mission yeah. Impossible. And um, I, I went back and I watched a few of the previous Mission Impossible movies. And I have to say, for me, the franchise, for me anyway, got really interesting, got even better was when I started watching from number three because it kind of, there, there was kind of like a bit of a shift. Number two with John Woo, that was all great with all the pigeons and everything. And number one was all, you know, number one was all like, you know, was kind of this good introduction. I remember watching that. But for me in part three, they kind of, they started to 
be a kind of bit of a change in the realism and they start getting better then i remember i watched ghost protocol i love the scenes like you know the the dubai stuff and everything and then they just kind of got better and better and better and i was like this these movies are great and the last movie with henry cavill i really enjoyed that one and then now here we are in number seven and i think devaldo this there was a delay in this, wasn't there? Production there was a delay because of COVID. It's very funny you mentioned about actually Mission Impossible Two, because uh, that was twenty three years ago. Dougie yeah. Scott, who was the, the main villain in that, he was meant to be Wolverine, and Mad. again that the, the the filming overran as well, <laughs> and that stopped him from becoming Wolverine. Wolverine. And then they went and called Hugh Jackman, who was doing musical theatre at the time or something. And he was Wolverine, and that changed his life forever. But yeah, just what I mentioned that. But yeah, filming overran this time because I think, I think it might have been because of uh, was it injuries or COVID or something? There was, there was, there was overrunning. There was, going there was on. something. Yeah, there was definitely yeah. something going on. COVID happened, and then he uh, uh, on the kind of um, the set because he's yeah he, on on the set. Yeah. There's is he had a whole rant. I heard yeah. that yeah. he yeah. blows off on one, and I get it. Mm. I get why he lost his shit. He's a producer on the movie. He mm. wants this movie to go really, really well. And if people aren't protecting themselves, then mm. hey ho, they can't make a movie. Every, mm. Everyone's at risk and everything. So, you know, obviously, whilst this was going on, he made uh, Top Gun and that came out. And then obviously, that was a massive smash hit. You know, people came to the cinemas to watch that in droves and everything. And, um, you know, I like I said before, I, I watched the kind of uh, the previous ones, and for me, what I loved at, at those opening shots, Deval, was the kind yeah. of you know when they light the fuse, the music yeah. comes along. There's this whole uh, you know opening intro and everything like that, right? So I, I kind of I'm, I'm a sucker for all those sorts of stuff, and these movies are the template for these movies i think deval are kind of like you know from james bond movies like you know what we got from the 70s and 80s from james bond and remember mission impossible was a tv show um and mm, oh, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, a tv show so it's got the kind of dna of that it running through you know throughout this whole thing but these movies have just become so much bigger different locations you know flashy cars massive stunt chases and this has got all of that this movie, if you're looking for action, if you're looking for gunfights, if you're looking for shootouts, if you're looking for loads of locations, this movie has got it all. Um, but I have to say, Duval, mm. it didn't have, it, it was great. Don't get me wrong. The movie was great. And maybe it's because I've been, I'm getting cynical. I don't know. Or it's really hard to please me. To, for me to say a movie is absolutely like 10 out of 10. It's very hard to do that nowadays. But there was just something where, I don't know, just something. Maybe there was too much action or, or I don't know, maybe there was just something missing in the way that the action is. Did some parts for you, maybe did some parts for you verge on Fast and Furious level? I don't know. I don't I'll, know. I'll say, yeah, for sure. There's one part that did. And or a couple of parts maybe there was a. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll quickly sort of spin through the the, the plot yeah, of the yeah, movie. Do that. So the, the plot of this one, uh, and it's so funny. All, all the, quite a few of the Mission Impossible movies, I think, apart from three, uh, where he was with his wife and they were having a mm. party. Every time they give him the message of the mission, the mission, he's in some dingy, <laughs> like warehouse apartment. What, yeah. where, where, what kind of life is that? He's hanging around in some warehouse apartment. That's a bad life. I just thought I'd say that. But anyway, <laughs> this one, the, the, I guess the story is, uh, and, the, the, you know, the story actually reminds me of Indiana Jones, you know, when you think about it. Mm. You think about it, cause Indiana Jones, is, you've got a, a, like an older kind of uh, star. Mm. Tom Cruise is not as old as Harrison Ford, but an older older kind of star, still doing action movies. Yeah. And the, the, the main plot device is something that is in two parts because in, in indiana jones had the dial of destiny which was in two parts and they were looking for different parts yes in this film, they're looking for this this key that is going to unlock the the full potential of this ai system which yeah. again comes in two parts two it's kind of like similar kind of thing but and the movie comes like, in two parts oh my gosh there you go <laughs> everything's in two parts but what i like about this film i mean the story is that they're basically mm. trying to find these keys that can you know give you the power of this 
really powerful AI system that can control mm. the world, basically. And they showed us a glimpse of its power at the start when it sunk a Russian submarine yeah. that was unsinkable. You couldn't even yeah. find it. Invisible. And it found yeah. it. So this, this AI system is just powerful. If governments get a hold of it, they are the, they, that's it. They own, they own the world. Yeah. And it's interesting that Tom Cruise, uh, uh, what's the last one we've done again? Hot Shots. Yeah. Oh, hot Shots, sorry. Top Gun. Yeah, Top Gun. <laughs> Top Gun. And this one, I think it's Gangster. Do you know why? Mm. Because both enemies are incognito enemies. Yeah. The enemies that. Think, yeah. Yeah. There's no nationality to them. There's nope. no like. There's no like a stereotype of like Afghan or Russian mm. or this or that. The, these enemies are probably more deadly than any because they are yeah. AI. And then which it, is relevant it, it, now. It's very relevant now. And then in Top Gun, it was some unknown yeah. clandestine force. Yeah, that's deadly. So this both in both movies, he and his team are up against that, and I think it's really it's a stroke of genius. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. That's that. Yeah, it was, it was good. I loved. There's one fight scene that I really did like, though. He goes hand to hand with Mantis, Pom oh, Clementif yeah. yeah. in an alleyway. Right, and I was just like, I was like yeah. that was that was less than an alleyway. Mate, that was mate, that was like you know a baby's bum yeah. cheeks. Like that's how tight <laughs> it was, man. But what I said, oh there's one God. bit in there. There's one bit in there where she's got him, like she's wrapped her legs around his neck and she's squeezing, mm. she's squeezing, and he just he like he's like bashing her in. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, you know what? This is like full Equal on. Like she's here to fight. <laughs> I'm here, I'm there to fight too. Exactly. Equal up. I know, and then I thought, uh, you know, Tom Cruise isn't gonna gonna go, you know, he's yeah. not gonna go toe to toe, man. This guy was yeah. breaking bones and busting. I tell you who I like. I like. Uh, we haven't seen much of him. The villain. So you oh, know, you, yes. so you know. So Deval's already mentioned oh, the kind of the yeah. villain is kind of you know the AI thing, but the villain, mm. the AI has a Isai Morales. Oh gangster. man! I tell you the reason why. I lo- I love this guy. He was mm. in Ozark. Yep. And not only that, he plays Crossbones in um, in Titans. Oh yes, he's gangster. Anything he's he, in, he's gangster. This guy is yeah. wicked. I yeah, he's, love he's this gangster. guy. He, he was really good. And I thought, you know what? And they picked an older. Yeah. He, you know, he's he's no spring yeah. like they're not not spring chicken. So kind of like an older. He's a fine wine. You thing. can tell he ages exactly. well in it. <laughs> I thought that was really good. There's a whole scene in the airport in Dubai Airport which I loved. Mm. I thought them going like turn left, turn right, like you know, do this and all, all that. Thought... Him. It reminded me of that. <laughs> yes. and, and you know, they obviously introduced uh, Peggy, Peggy Carter, mm. uh, Haley Atwell. She it's almost like she because I was. Do you know what I must, I must say as well? I've enjoyed Mission Impossible more since Rebecca Ferguson came in. Yes, yeah. she came in. She's like and she came people. in. When did she come in? The last one or the one she before came that? In the one before. Right, this okay. Her, her third go, but right. she has added a next level because she's oh, almost no. like she saves Tom, Tom, Tom Cruise a few times. You know, she's yes. she's so good and like capable at whatever she needs to do. Yeah, she just comes in, does it. Sometimes you're in her way; she'll deal with you <laughs> too. With I like yeah. that a bit of conflict. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that but, was really good. So, I'm not going to say what, what's you know her, what happens with her character, but mm. I really yeah. really liked her. But Haley Atwell's character I liked again because she was a bit less competent yeah. and it's a bit more like okay everyone's also good but sometimes someone that isn't as good you gotta go on a journey with them as well yeah, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. interesting to see how she kind of fit into it and then she has in the space of this movie she has an arc as well so yeah, yeah. she goes through the kind of hero's journey and yeah. um something happens to her at the end of the movie as well which is going to connect into the second one mm. but you know um do you know how it ended were you expecting the cliffhanger? Uh, no, I, was, I don't know what I was expecting, you know. Mm-hmm. I knew it was two parts. I didn't know. I wasn't expecting anything. I, I just yeah. liked it. I don't know. It's weird. Some people, I think some people are saying that they, they thought it was going to be a bit more of a hard-hitting end or something like that. Yeah. But I just, it, it, yeah, I was fine with The it. way they set it up. I didn't stay mm. back. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a spoiler. I didn't stay back until the end of the credits, but apparently... Did you stay back until the end of credits? No, because I I, started, I googled it and they said there's no post credit scene. So I didn't. There's stay. no post credit scene, but there's a sound at the end. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Yeah, 
I know. <laughs> I, 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 mate, yeah. I did exactly the same thing. The yeah, first thing yeah, I did was, is there a post credit yeah, scene? Yeah. Was one? And said, no, but there's a kind of sound. Mm. And then that kind of tells you that the AI thing or something's mm-hmm. been armed or, or, yeah, or turned okay, on or okay. something like that, right? Yeah, to so, ask you a question as well. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're asking about Fast and Furious part. And the, the bit that I thought was a bit Fast and furious see was the, ch- the, the car chase in Italy. Yeah, yeah. And the, there's a, bit, a few bits where it was just a bit too easy. Where he's there's a bit where he's cutting the parachute, and he jumps through the plane, and I'm Absolutely. like, how, how do you crash through the plane without mashing your whole body up and exactly. save someone just like that? That was a bit cartoony. And exactly. then Tom, Tom Clementive's character was very happy when she was chasing him. She was almost like, <sighs> I was like, and why are you doing those faces for? It just seems a bit know, weird. I didn't get that. And weird. also, yeah. did you notice she she had no speaking role? Very little speaking. Yeah, yeah. a bit like v- Batista in uh, Blimmin' uh, Blade Runner or something, isn't it? Or yeah. Bond, sorry, like Bond. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit weird. Yeah, why? She- just a, but yeah, she was really maniacal. She was really kind of mm. crazy, crazy, crazy. And then there's kind of something that happens on over there. Um, but uh, so we had Vanessa Kirby. She She's back yeah. in this. Yeah. And who else did we have? Um, was there any uh, other big... I'm not sure about big. I mean, there's, there's a few people that we've probably recognised. Obviously, Sh- Shea Wingham is like the agent who's trying to chase him down. We've seen him a few times. He's Briggs. Yes. Yeah, Briggs. Uh, that was it. A few times. Yeah. yeah. He I rhymes, loved... Obviously, Simon Pegg as usual. They okay. Were there. They All right. Really I just have to stuff. mention this. I just have to mention this. Right. Yeah. Vink rhymes. Right. Okay. <laughs> when he comes on. Yeah. When he was speaking, I was like, "Is he delivering Shakespeare?" Like every I know his single. Eyes were I was like, "Is he okay?" <laughs> He's got something in his eye, like something's Every going on here. Every single line that he delivered, the director said to him, we want you to deliver it like it's like, you know, like Shakespeare. It was, it yeah. had so much gravitas and I was just like, yeah. just say the line, like, you know. My but gosh. everything was like, oh my God. It's like, it yeah. was just like so crazy. But, I thought um, something happened because he kept saying, oh, I need to do this by myself. I thought maybe he's like, maybe they've edited something because he wasn't yeah. maybe in shape or something or. What, like, uh, yeah, because he's in, he, then at some point he's not in the movie. Yeah, so I thought maybe something might happen, but uh, mm. and also I I watched a few of the old ones as well, and I tell you, Tom mm. Cruise and Ving Rhymes, I don't know what age difference they are, oh, but man. yeah, they, I mean, I saw one of the <laughs> in Mission, Mission Impossible Three, which came out in two thousand and six, I think. Yeah, Ving Rhymes is able to run around and go here in, in and this down one here. he's on the desk one. yeah he's not moving <laughs> he's not moving <laughs> he's not moving <laughs> no, no, also, no, no. <laughs> also don't you think though um there was one bit all right i don't know why this happened maybe you might not realize this there's a bit now people have probably already seen this so i'm not giving anything away because this is in the trailer there's a scene where uh, tom cruise is on the motorbike Mm. And this massive kind of brilliant, brilliant movie movie magic basically happens, right? And um, so, you know, that's all that. But just before he's on the motorbike and he leaps off, he has a flashback. I can't remember. Did, what, was, what was that about? He, he has the flashback of the the person that was killed in the past where Isai Morales oh, killed yes, that person. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, oh, was that from a different film? I couldn't remember, but... No, it's just basically flash. But why yeah. did he have a flash? But why is that person a flashback and not his wife a flashback? I think it's from a, a, an earlier past. You know, I, I, mm. I think that, I think we'll see that in part two. Because I was thinking, who's that person? Like, I was I was confused. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was just like, oh, is he going to have? Is he is he going to have a flashback? You know, from his wife. Is that going to be resolved and like you know whatever and stuff like that? So uh, a lot of people are asking the question, Devado, Are Tom Cruise and Haley Atwell going to hook up? In, in the second part. My man hooks up with everyone, man. Because him and Rebecca Ferguson, they were touching face. Face At one again, stage. Or like, you know. the balcony, like, you know, like that chilling. And yeah. then now, now Hayley Atwell, who protects her with his life, is like, they're touching face. I'm like, man. Yeah. And apparently, behind, uh, behind the scenes, they're, they're an item, no. though, aren't they? No. No? Oh, maybe. No, okay. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying no, as in, like, you're shocking me. I, it could be true. But yeah. it's reckon, no. is it? I don't know. I mean... Being right. seduced by Tom Cruise, I don't know if you're a female. Mm, it's true, you know. Yeah, might maybe, but I've not heard anything. But this could be, you yeah. could be breaking some news here, man. Break here on the flicks. So listen, news. look, it's definitely a thumbs up from us, and it's definitely yeah. you. Listen, you if you've seen those other movies, you, you're gonna go go watch this, and you're gonna watch the second part. So do we know Deval when that second part, Dead Reckoning Part Two, is coming out? 
Part two meant to be coming out in a, in about a year or two. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, about a year. I think it might be even next year. I know they kind of tried to do them back to back, but I think it could be two years. I think it could be a bit of a wait in between. Okay. But obviously, Tom Cruise needs to, you know, heal from all the stunts that he did because he's done a lot yep. of his own stunts. The car driving, yes, you know, that, that jump off the cliff. He he did that uh, about nine times or something times like that. Or something crazy. Uh, yeah. It's this guy does a lot of his own stunts, and it's just a bit of a madness. He didn't get madly injured in this one compared to the previous film because he broke his uh, foot, didn't he, in London, yeah, London or something? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, yeah, so this one, I think, I think it's a couple of years that we've got to wait uh, for Damn. the next one. But this has got an eight point. What is it? Eight point two on IMDb. Wow, so that's very high for this kind of Go film. Go check it out. Honestly. But yeah. forget IMDb. The flicks are saying. Go check yeah. it out. Yeah, we're saying go check it out. Definitely. Go see it. Uh, all right. And that's it. That's all we've got time for on this week's episode. So remember, folks, keep it locked with the flicks as we're bringing you more movie reviews every single week. Next week, we've got Oppenheimer. And Devout, is that the same week as uh, Barbie? It is the same week, same day. Yeah. Yes. All yeah. right. So listen, we're going to try and fit those in. Definitely one of those movies. Are de- one, we'll we'll see those movies. Uh, definitely up and I'm definitely going to watch. And then we've got Talk To Me as well, I think, coming next uh, next week as well, I think. I think that's a week after now. A oh, week back. after, is it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So listen, keep it locked with the fixes. We hope you enjoyed the show. Get in-